have UFOs shut down our government's defense systems. There is evidence that something caused missiles to malfunction during test launches. Former Air Force officers tell their incredible story about the film that was confiscated by the CIA. What was on it? And why don't officials want us to see it? Find out right now on Larry King Live. Good evening. We begin with shocking allegations that UFOs have interfered with missiles at U.S. Air Force bases and aliens are monitoring nuclear warheads and bombs. Our first guests claim UFOs have activated missile systems at five Air Force bases in five different states. They also claim a cover-up. They bet the United States government is keeping the information secret. Former Air Force officers and an investigator are here with their stories. Here in Los Angeles is Robert Hastings. He's author of UFO and UFOs and Nukes. I have the book right here. The book is available at ufohastings.com. He has been investigating sightings at weapon sites for years. Bob Salas is a former captain, U.S. Air Force Base. You have the, at the U.S. Air Force. He was at Maelstrom Air Force Base in 1967, where there were claims a UFO caused missiles to malfunction. He's co-author of Faded Giant. Uh, Bob Jameson is with us, former U.S. Air Force officer. He was at Malmstrom as well in 1967, and he says his superiors told him UFOs caused the malfunctions. And in Peoria, Illinois, is Dr. Bob Jacobs, former first lieutenant U.S. Air Force, former U.S. Air Force photographic instrumentation officer. A UFO showed up on film that he shot in 1964 at Vandenberg Air Force Base, and that was later confiscated by CIA agents. All of our guests are named Bob. <laughs> So I'm going to call them by their last names. We'll start with Robert Hastings. How did you get, uh, what's your explanation for UFOs at nuclear weapon sites? I can simply say after 35 years of research that these in incidents have taken place. Uh, there are hundreds of declassified documents which indicate that UFOs have demonstrated a distinct and ongoing interest in our nuclear weapon sites. I've also interviewed nearly a hundred gentlemen who were involved in these incidents at various Air Force bases. Uh, this is very widespread. What you're seeing here this evening is the tip of the iceberg. How do they cause a malfunction? What do they do to cause something to not work? I think that's probably still an unknown. Uh, I know that Boeing engineers attempted to du duplicate some of the malfunctions. Uh, they did succeed in doing that, but they still can't call, uh, determine what initially caused them. Bob Salas could address okay. that. Bob, what happened at Maelstrom in 1967? Uh, 1967, I was on duty as a missile launch officer. I get uh, calls from my guards upstairs. First, I get one call saying that they're seeing strange lights flying in the sky, and uh, I didn't pay too much attention to that. About five minutes later, uh, the, the main security guard, the flight security controller, calls down, says he's looking at a glowing red object, uh, very uh, large, hovering over the front gate. Uh, uh, he wants to know what to do. I, I tell him to secure the facility. Uh, we hang up. I go to tell my commander. So within seconds of that call, uh, my missiles start shutting down. I recall uh, losing all, all ten of them. You didn't see the object? I didn't see the object because I was obliged to stay underground in the capsule. By shutting down, we mean what? By shutting down, what I mean is they were not launchable. They, they were in a no-go condition, uh, disabled. How long to restart them? How long to restart? Uh, well, I'm sure it took over a day and, and maybe... Uh, all right. Now, Bob Davis. Jameson, you were there too, right? Yes, sir. And you were in the Air Force? Yes, I was in the Air Force. And where were you when this was happening? Yeah, I was a, I'm a targeting, was a targeting officer, missile targeting officer. I was at home relaxing, and I got a call from job control to tell them to come in. Uh, oh. A missile had gone down. My job as a targeting officer was to bring him back up. And so I went into... So you didn't see the incident. You just went to the missile. I went to the incident. I went to the uh, site. Where is Maelstrom? It's Great Falls, Montana. Just outside of Great Falls, Montana. What did you make of the story? Well, I know that uh, it's true. I went into job control after I got to the hangar. I was called in, went to the hangar, went to the job control, and I noticed they have a map of the whole complex with green lights where the missiles are good, but there's one small area with 10 red lights. I mean, those missiles were out. Is it possible they just malfunctioned? That doesn't happen. Very rarely does a missile malfunction, and I don't think any 
much uh, more rare as would be two at the same time, but ne ne never ten. Oh, uh, well, Bob Jacobs, where were you? What were you filming, and where were you? I was officer in charge of optical instrumentation at Vandenberg Air Force Base from 1963 to 66. That's our job California. Was to photograph. That's California, so right there on the coast. Right. And our job was to photograph with high-speed instrumentation every missile launch from 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 Vandenberg going down the test range. Uh, they wanted to find out if we could figure out a place to put a telescope where we could get a side view of the, of the missile so that we could see all three stages of powered flight. So I went up to Big Sur, California, up on, an air, well, on a uh, U.S. Forest Service road on Anderson Peak, and I installed a, a telescopic site up there. Uh, the Air Force flew in a, a huge catadaptic telescope from uh, the Cape. It was built uh, by uh, Dr. Walter Manning at, at the Boston University. They put the t telescope up there, and with that thing, with, which had a, a focal length of 2,500 inches, we photographed an Atlas missile raising up out of the, the, the fog cover and flying down range. We got all three stages of powered flight, and as the uh, dummy warhead and the, and the package flew on down range, we were all celebrating the fact that we had uh, seen the thing and accomplished the mission. When I got, got back to the, the base with the film the next day, I was called into the office of Major Florence J. Mansman. And uh, there were three people in gray suits standing in there. There was a 16-millimeter camera and a screen set up. Major Mansman said, Lieutenant, sit down and watch this. And he turned down the lights, turned on the camera, on the, the, the projector, and the film came on. And I recognized it as the film that we'd shot at Big Sur the previous day. Toward the end of the, of the flight, I was looking at Major Mansman saying, pretty good stuff, huh, sir? And, and uh, suddenly he said, just watch this. And as I watched, the, the, the warhead, the dummy warhead, the chaff that was put out in front of it as a decoy uh, to, to deflect uh, the Russian anti-missile missile tracking radar. Everything was flying along, and suddenly, in the same direction, this stuff was flying at about 8,000 miles an hour. You an object came into the frame, shot a, a beam of light at the warhead, flew up to the top, shot another beam of light at the warhead, flew around the direction it was flying, shot another beam of light at the warhead, flew down, shot another beam of light at the warhead, and flew out the same way it came in. Well, I don't see Why said, didn't you see this when you were shooting it? Well, it was uh, six to eight hundred miles away from us. Oh, I got you. The only and they confiscated, the only they confiscated. Well, first of all, the Major Mansman said to me, what was that? Were you guys screwing around up there? I said, no, sir. <laughs> and he said, then tell me what that was. And I said, we got a UFO. And he said, Lieutenant, you are never to speak of this again. As far as you're concerned, this didn't happen. Hold on, and guys. For I'll be right back. i got to take a break. Okay, that's weird. Uh, you think there's a national defense plan for aliens? Sounds crazy. We'll ask about that next. I'm not alone in witnessing something extraordinary. That's the bottom line. Powerful beaming spotlights. Angular in shape, like sitting on three legs. No type of aircraft that I've ever seen. Rapidly before. maneuver and quickly it's disappear. Accelerating to very high speed. Majestic triangle craft. What we were seeing didn't resemble anything known to us. Bob James, I'll make this clear. You were asked to say nothing. I was not asked to say nothing. In fact, no one uh, admonished me, and I did not sign a. Uh, an oath uh, saying that uh, so I can't say. So there was no cover up as far as you were concerned. That's correct. So you, you just I could tell. I can I can speak about it. You saw what you saw. Do you think there's a there's a, a plan for invasion by aliens? I wouldn't presume to know that. I just simply know that uh, the U.S. government does not obviously appreciate people such as myself and these gentlemen speaking out about this. What we're describing on an ongoing basis, decade after decade at multiple Air Force bases is just disruption of our nuclear missiles. We have an email from Kyle in Plainville, Massachusetts. Why would UFOs only disable U.S. defense systems and not another country? Is there a lesson to be learned in all this? Or do you think maybe, uh, Bob Salas, they have disabled other countries? They have. Uh, I know that there have been uh, uh, events in, in the Soviet Union where they have uh, interfered there. Uh, they've been they've been seen in just a, any country you can name. Uh, you know, and they, they do disable communications, especially. We have an email from Eric in Atlanta, Georgia. What can be done, if anything, to force the U.S. government and/or military to declassify and release all it knows 
about UFOs. Dr. Jacobs, when do you think that would happen? Do you think that would happen? It, it would take a revolution in, in public opinion. The problem with this field is that it, it's surrounded by so many crackpots and weirdos who, who make, a, make a joke about it that those of us who take it seriously and think that something is definitely going on that needs to be scientifically investigated are laughed at. The technician here in, in the studio where I am, I, I said we were talking about UFOs tonight and her face lit up and she got that kind of mm, look, which is typical of what happens to us. Uh, I think that we, we need a, a, a real a scientific committee to be put together to look into these things. I, I think Robert I agree. this too. Absolutely. Bob Salas, you agree? Yeah, I would like to make a comment real quick. Uh, the Air Force has perpetrated a fraud, uh, especially in our case. They claimed uh, they claim in their uh, their statement about UFOs that nothing has there no no UFO incident has ever affected national security, and we lost 20 missiles.